Welcome back or welcome if you're just joining us. It's the France 24 debate. We're talking about Penelope Gate and whether it's going to upend the French uh, presidential race. The frontrunner, François Fillon, uh, turns out that his wife, Penelope Fillon, British-born, uh, for eight years was uh, his parliamentary assistant. He's a member of parliament. And as such, uh, she earned over those eight years more than half a million uh, euros. Problem is, many say they never saw her uh, at the National Assembly. She herself on the campaign trail last October telling a regional newspaper uh, that uh, she had never been involved uh, directly in her husband's political affairs up to now. We're talking about it in the company of New York Times Paris Bureau Chief Elisa Johansson Rubin. Welcome back. Welcome back as well Thanks. to uh, Stéphane Bonifaci, Executive Director of uh, Fraudnet. Uh, with us, Charles Givaninovich of uh, François Fillon's Les Républicains Party, municipal councillor for the Paris suburb of Maison Lafitte. Good evening, Mark. And uh, from Prague, Martin Michelot, deputy director of the European uh, think tank. Welcome we'll back to all of you. François Fillon himself, his initial reaction, and you got to recall, this is a man who uh, leapfrogged the favorites to become uh, the conservative nominee for uh, president uh, on the ticket of being... Uh, upright and of having integrity. Uh, his initial reaction was to spin the story well as misogynistic. I see the mudslinging has begun. I will not comment because there's nothing to comment on. I would simply like to say that I'm outraged by this article's contempt and misogyny. Because she's my wife, that means she's not allowed to work. Imagine for a second a male politician saying that a woman, like this article claims, can only make jam. All the feminists would yell, this is what I have to say to you. Stéphane Bonifaci, what do you think of that, that, that answer? I, I think we'll have to hear more about this, <clears throat> because I think it's a pretty weak answer, I would say. Pretty, pretty weak answer. And again, this was the question uh, uh, that, that, that's out there, is she told uh, this, this regional newspaper that she's never been directly involved in her husband's political affairs until this campaign. And now we find out that she was his parliamentary assistant. So one of the two is lying about how active a role she's had. No, the truth is that there is no lie. The thing is that she is elected in Solène, their, their village in the southern uh, part of France, and that uh, both of them are elected there. François Fillon uh, has been, during the last 30 years, an MP, a municipal council and the president of the department. And during all these years, uh, he has done his political um, action with honesty and moral rectitude. Today, in 20 minutes, uh, he will explain his, himself uh, at the uh, TF1, which is the, the main uh, channel in, in yeah, France. Due to speak on French uh, national television yes. uh, during the 8 o'clock news. Yeah. He will. And, you know, last time you, you invited me, Mark, it was on the cash scandals for Sarkozy and for Eric Wert. They were both put into formal investigation and nothing happened. I think we're making a lot about nothing. Making a lot about nothing. Uh, uh, Lisa Johansson Rubin, your, your thoughts on this? Because uh, she, ne she uh, claims that, uh, you know, she hadn't been directly involved in her husband's politics up to now. And yet, and, and also people inside of, of his party saying they haven't seen her much in parliament. Well, I always think that these stories take a while to actually judge how much impact they have on the race. And, and ultimately, that's what we'll have to see. So I think it will matter what he says tonight and whether people believe it. But I, I, also, I also think that it's, there have been repeated questions about uh, various ethical issues for French politicians. And it's, it's very unclear to me as a foreigner what what things the French really mind in their politicians and what they don't mind. Well, Par by the way, actually, yeah, nearly that job description, parliamentary assistant, it's yes. a thankless one, long hours. I was a parliamentary assistant during my studies. I've never seen Penelope Fillon at the National Assembly. Uh, but what we have to know is that more than 20 percent uh, of the MPs, both senators and, uh, and uh, uh, deputies, uh, MPs, uh, have their wife, son or a member of their family as uh, their assistant. So it's for them like a little bonus uh, for, for their salary. And they employ 
uh, their own wife or their own son. So was she actively working for him if you never saw her at the National well, Assembly? you know, when you are an assistant uh, of an MP, you can work at the National Assembly or you can work in the circonscription. Uh, in, the, in the home district? In, in the home district, actually, yes. And I think uh, she was working in the home district because she is elected in the home district of Solène. So you think she was working from the home district. What about her salary? Because uh, it's a thankless job that's with long hours, as you know. Mm -hmm. At the end of her eight years, she was earning more than 7,000 euros a month. Actually, it was not my salary. <laughs> I had maybe... Uh, five times less uh, or six times less. Uh, so it's it's a very big salary and they will have to prove, I think, uh, that she worked a lot for, for this salary. This is uh, the, the part of shade in this affair. Martin Michelot, uh, are Fillon's chances of uh, becoming the next president of France severely compromised by this? Well, of course, we have to respect the, the, the very simple principle of innocent before proven guilty. So there is a charge of proof both on part of the justice and also on the part of François Fillon to prove that the allegations uh, actually uh, do not hold or that they actually do hold from the part of the justice. Whether that hurts François Fillon's chances is a bit too early to say. But one thing or two things are actually for sure. Uh, the image of probity that has stuck to François Fillon that has actually helped him uh, win the primary that has helped him get the vote uh, of the people outside of Paris, outside of the urban centers, will cert certainly be hurt. The second uh, already conclusion that we can draw from this sequence is that the unity that seemed to exist around François Fillon within the Republican Party, within the Conservative Party, is actually crumbling. And the, the various spokesperson of, of François Fillon uh, have all had co almost contradictory remarks about the affair. And this is something that is extremely damaging because it looks like the, the Conservative Party is not united behind François Fillon. And I would actually, if I were the candidate myself, I would be asking serious questions about the support that the, the team has for him. Yeah, we heard about, uh, uh, the, the, the newspaper came out on Wednesday morning, but it, you, you get advanced copies uh, on the Tuesday. And we heard that on the Wednesday, uh, those in parliament close to one of the losers of that primary race, Nicolas Sarkozy, the former president, they had a huddle, a private meeting on the side. Is Fillon gonna be able to rally the troops? Well, rallying the troops is what he's been trying to do since he's actually won uh, the primary. And he had this this moment uh, yesterday with Alain Juppé, whom he defeated uh, in the primary. And you could already see, regardless of the affair, that the two men don't uh, don't you know wouldn't wouldn't go on vacation uh, together. So uh, the the idea <laughs> of, of unity is is extremely extremely complicated right now. And François Fillon is actually the one who, within his party, will have to show that will have the burden of the proof to show that he is not misleading his party. That the that the probity, uh, the honesty that he was elected on is not some is not just a, a facade. Well, actually, uh, on Wednesday, he had uh, a meeting with Alain Juppé in Bordeaux, uh, his city, and it was uh, the day to uh, show a good picture of uh, the whole Republican family. Yeah, it was together. a good photo op. They had a, they had a lunch, what was it, a they cafe? Had, yeah, or they, a... Had a, they had a lunch, and they yeah. were also at the inauguration of Droite Libre, uh, which is Virginie Calmel's uh, political party. And I think that the picture was a bit wasted uh, with, uh, with the affair. But just one question is the question of the timing. Uh, we are talking about facts uh, that are um, in, we're, um, heading in 2002, 2001, uh, and maybe our, our lawyer could, could tell us uh, if uh, there is a prescription in, in, these, uh, in these facts, well, in the French well, law. Well, there's a grandfather clause on all this. And also the fact that uh, the investigating magistrates on this, uh, quick to the draw, to start their investigation. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, technically, it's the prosecutors and not the investigating magistrates who initiated uh, the inquiry. Um, a very quick reaction. I think we are seeing things changing. And uh, uh, coming back to your remark, what do French people mind about? Let us say that things are changing and that they are being very critical of their politicians. We have the Cahuzac case. He was very severely sentenced. This was the, the socialist budget minister crusading and who was found to have had uh, offshore 
bank accounts. accounts. Yeah. And, and was severely sentenced. And we had also the recent case of Monsieur Guéant, who was as well extremely severely sentenced. And, you know, 10 years ago, things like that wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have gone that far. So I think what we are seeing here is a change of atmosphere. And something like this, um, which would have been considered, well, you know, what's the problem a deputy? I mean, he can work with his wife. Uh, I mean, they were all doing it it's at the end of the day. What's, what's the problem, really? You know, that kind of attitude is gone, is going away, I think. And, should, it and be, it, should it be illegal, like it is in the European Parliament, to have a spouse who works as your parliamentary assistant? Well, in any case, it raises questions. And, and the least that can be said is that if you really want to hire Penelope, your wife, your son, you have your, your, your daughter, you have to demonstrate that, you know, there's no other choice or that this person has the capacity to be a good assistant. Um, it's a technical job to be an assistant, a parliamentary assistant. It's about yeah. law. It's about drafting laws. In the United States, uh, the new transport uh, secretary, she's the wife of the Senate majority leader. Nobody on either side is contesting. She's uh, qualified for the post. She's, uh, she, she's definitely qualified for that job. So it is, a, is it a problem when a family member... I, I, think, I think it really depends somewhat on, on how far apart the positions are. It, uh, and, and I think there's a distinction. She she's, will be in the executive branch... Uh, her husband is in the legislative branch, and that that does create some separation. Um, it's probably not the best thing. I, I think people might feel it's a, a bit of double dipping by a family, for instance. But uh, it's not quite the same as when it's someone who's in your in your own office and who is being paid with taxpayer dollars. I think that's the, or taxpayer euros in this case. I think that's always the bigger question. French lawmakers have never been called to task on this. In March of 2015, though, the president of the European Parliament launched an inquiry into national front members who declare parliamentary assistants who are, in fact, not working in Brussels, but uh, party employees back here in Paris. Cases include Marine Le Pen's bodyguard, who was on her payroll. She's since had uh, 339,000 euros docked from her salary as a member of the European Parliament. Martin Michelot, I put the question to you. Should family members be barred from being on the payroll uh, of their spouses in elected office? Well, one thing you can say is that it would certainly make things easier. We wouldn't be having this, this unpleasant conversation and François Fillon wouldn't be soul searching and looking at mistakes past. Uh, if if we if this if this rule uh, had been clear, uh, the, the the other interesting thing in, in in what we mentioned is the fact that you mentioned Marine Le Pen uh, and her mis misdealings in the European Parliament. Well, as a matter of fact, we are we are talking about François Fillon. We are not talking about Marine Le Pen. And as a matter of fact, French people really, or the people who vote for the National Front, are not, do not mind that the National Front is is doing this. What they what they see is that everyone is doing it anyway. Whether it's François Fillon, whether it's Jérôme Cahuzac, whether it's Marine Le Pen, and this this sort of affairs really feeds into the idea that you know they're all part of the system. And this feeds abstentionism, this feeds low voting, and this certainly feeds the anti-system feeling that the French electorate seems to be expressing more and more. And uh, I, I don't believe that this is an affair that could eventually uh, benefit the National Front, just like I don't believe that uh, talking about this today or the discussion that we have will actually change the law, because the, the, the National Assembly, the Senate, are very conservative bodies. You know, you would have to reform these bodies. And this is something that they may not want to do. And the the fact that lots of uh, MPs have their wives or family relatives uh, is, is, is assistance so may not change. So you're saying this won't change, time. this won't impact the race either way, is what you're saying. At the, at the end of the day, the first round in April, second round in May of the French presidential election. If François Fillon is able to get out of this relatively uh, unharmed, if he finds, you know, a pirouette says, if I did something wrong, I will reimburse, I will use my own money to reimburse, he will eventually come out uh, unscathed because there, this, is, this is politics. Uh, as we know, it's not always an entirely clean game. Uh, and I'm sure there, we, we will be having a lot of other conversations on potentially other affairs uh, going forward.
and there's already been one that came out the same day that uh, the Fillon scandal broke, uh, the third man of this presidential campaign. He's uh, François Hollande's former economy minister, Emmanuel Macron, who is not running as a socialist but as an independent and uh, he finds himself denying charges by conservative lawmakers uh, that he used 120,000 euros of ministry funds to kickstart his uh, presidential run. Uh, Stéphane Bonifaci, are, are, are these two affairs to be put on the same playing field, or are they different things? Or Well, technically, it's, you know, embezzlement of public funds, if that's true. He, he, Macron firmly denies it. He says it's slander. So, so, so is Fillon denying it. So no. we'll have to see. But technically, that would be an embezzlement of public funds in both cases. Um, you know, Fillon will have to demonstrate that, you know, Penelope did do something. Otherwise, you know, it's... And Juppé was faced with, with a similar issue of fictitious employees. And uh, it goes, you know, it's, it, we, it's not unheard of, but it's certainly problematic. And contrarily to what um, our colleague said, um, Martin, I, Michelot. Martin Michelot, I think, I think it will impact uh, the race. It will because I'm seeing a change of mood and I'm seeing the prosecutors acting extremely quickly on this issue. It's not a complicated matter. We may hear from them uh, in the course of you know, next weeks or these, months. Why, why did they act so quickly? Usually, uh, justice takes time. You know, when was the Parquet National Financier, the financial prosecutor's mm -hmm. office, when was it created? Just after the Kazakh case. They are determined to show that they are being active. They were fierce against Kazakh. Active, they are but going just to, to be... allay Charles Gidavinovich's fears. Yeah. Active and impartial? I, I, well, look, they've hit Kazakh very severely. Um, I think they have shown their independence there. But I think on a, on a political viewpoint, both affairs are truly linked um, because uh, Fillon is the guy which is, who is leading the polls, so he is the guy to kill. Uh, and just after uh, this Fillon scandal appeared, it's uh, the, the president of the uh, MPs, of the Republican MPs at the National Assembly, who declared uh, the, the Macron scandal. So I think it's just uh, another scandal to respond uh, to the Republican and the Fillon uh, Penelope Gate. Martin Michelot? Yes, well, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting because with the, the, the case that you quoted about Emmanuel Macron potentially misusing min, uh, Ministry of Economy funds, we had the same discussion in, in 2012 when then-President Nicolas Sarkozy was accused of using the means of the government or of the state in order to conduct his presidential campaign, and eventually he he left this uh, he left this this case unharmed. Now, what I think the justice is doing, though, is that they're acting quickly in order to clear any doubts, in order to clear any suspicions. And I actually think we should we should we should be happy about the fact that justice is the justice system is trying to do something about this quickly, in order for the campaign not to be troubled to too large of an extent about this affair, whether there is uh, whether there is something to do about it, whether the Republicans should rethink their strategy, rethink their candidate, which would be the worst case scenario, or whether we just continue as we are in the situation right now. So I think we should actually see this decision to move quickly is, is rather positive for our collective sanity. All right, so uh, scandals, uh, the accusation of scandal, uh, hitting Les Républicains, the main center-right party. Accusation of scandal against the potential third man in that presidential race, according to the polls. No scandals so far for the mainstream socialist parties who have their uh, second round of primaries of the left on Sunday. Instead, they're just battling for a bit more visibility. The former education minister, Benoit Hamon, Emmanuel Valls, uh, have a, a real problem with voter apathy after the first round. Polls that put him in fifth place should that election uh, for president take place tomorrow. Behind the far right's Le Pen, Fillon, Macron, and the communist back Jean-Luc Mélenchon. Fifth place. That's according to a survey last week. It would give the ruling socialists their worst show in a presidential election since 1969. Alicia Johansson Rubin, not a good year to be an incumbent, but also perhaps not a good year to be from a big mainstream party. I think that's right. And I think part of it is that if you look at both parties, both the, the uh, 
Republican the, the, or the sort of conservative center and the socialist sort of left-leaning center, they're very divided within themselves about what they want to back. So I've, I've been out actually talking to a number of French voters, and over and over they, and again, they say, I'm, I'm confused about who, who stands for what. And, you know, I, and, and I have all these things I'm not happy about. And then depending on the person's background, they either, either are thinking of voting for Macron or they're thinking of voting for the National Front. Um, but it's, uh, I think there's a lot of disillusionment and, and parties are splitting. And this is happening all over Europe. How do you explain actually. that splintering? Well, I, I, I think that there really are differing ideas about protectionism versus free trade and, and, and how much people – that's the way it would be viewed in, in America. I think here it's how much sovereignty and uh, uh, each country is going to have. Schengen has had really serious problems, particularly in the post-terrorist era, and people are, appear to be much more reluctant about that. And jobs have been disappearing, and people want to br blame something. And there are those who say, no, if you make Europe more integrated, it will get better, and there'll be more possibilities. And there are others who say, no, we need to, we need to keep out some of the workers who are coming in. Well, it's, it's true that on the, on the Socialist Party, uh, both Mitterrand and Hollande uh, were uh, good figures because they managed uh, to rally to uh, their own cause different currents of the Socialist Party. And now we see that there is a true split in, in between Hamon and uh, Manuel Valls. There between was, the left, yes, the hard left, the hard and the more left mainstream. And, and, right. and the more uh, socialist as a governing party. Uh, and we we have this also uh, in our own political party with different currents. And what is a good thing with François Fillon is that uh, from now on, he uh, managed to rally all these different currents uh, to his uh, personality. Martin Michelot? Well, there seems to be a curse of governance uh, for, for the socialists after this, uh, after, after this campaign, because Benoit Hamon is someone who stayed in government only for, for, for a short amount of time, a, a largely unremarkable passage, uh, that being said, until he, he flamed out at, uh, at, at the end. And uh, the, the support uh, that the socialists have, have been getting, uh, the, the support that Valls has put in defending the own, his own work and the work of the president that he served, is something that we have never seen in this, in this current system. The, the level of, of, of disavowment uh, of, of what we in French call le bilan, what has been done, what has been produced, is, is quite impressive. And uh, it looks like these five years uh, will have gone by without a, without a noise, without a sound, because no one is actually willing to step up and defend what the socialists have done. Uh, the, 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 the government has been very criticized, but there are some things uh, that should be debated. And this is perhaps one of the, one, one of the tragedies uh, of, of the socialist primary, not only that it will produce a weak candidate who probably doesn't have the shoulders to carry the socialist party in, in the future, but this is also a government uh, that will have acted the division and and probably the future uh, splitting of the Socialist Party into dividing uh, dividing factions, further dividing also the French electorate and dividing the, the left-wing forces, which I, I do see is, is a danger for the survival of the left in France. Right, let me ask here uh, Stéphane Bonifaci uh, uh, as the legal eye on this. Uh, this curse of the incumbent, uh, there is the context that uh, both Elisa and Martin Michelot have described right now. Uh, the uh, unease over Europe, over immigration, over terrorism, over globalization, all those things. But France also has this winner-take-all democracy, where if you're the president, that's why we were asking those questions about the judiciary, right? If you're the president, you've got a lot of power when it comes to uh, lording over both the legislative branch and the judicial branch of government. True, although although let's talk about the judiciary. Um, they, they, the prosecutors have a sort, they will not like me saying it, they have a sort of link with uh, the executive branch uh, of, of our government. It's not true of judges, for one thing. So, so there's a difference to be made here. Now, talking about prosecutors and going back to the issue as to whether this investigation against uh, Fillon was started so quickly because there was pressure, political pressure. I don't believe it one second. I really think that this 
office, this financial prosecutor's office, is willing to show that it is being active. And, and I think when, it's a and, good thing. And when the dust settles, French politicians will be more or less accountable or it'll just be the same as it's always been? Look, there are tendencies here. If you go back to England, the MP scandal, you remember that, that was, what, five years ago. Have things changed after that? I think they have. I think that you know, British politics have changed because of it. They are not daring doing what they used to do. And, and I'm hoping that things like that will change the face of politics. We need parliaments, MPs. We need MPs doing their job and having assistants like Charles who are doing their job rather than, you know, having their friends, their families, uh, their family members around them. Because, once again, it's a technical ma matter to draft law. All right. We're talking we're, about... We're, yeah, all right. We're going to have to... A debate we're gonna on reducing ha the number of MPs. We're going to have to leave it there, unfortunately. Efficient. So much <laughs> to say. Charles Gidevinovich, I want to thank. I want to thank, thank uh, Elisa johansson Rubin. I want to thank as well. Stéphane Bonifaci and Martin Michelot for being with us from Prague. Thank you for joining us here in the France 24 debate.